Alright, so um, I'm going to continue with the word. Um, you would have noticed that I did, did some readings of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one's the lead because I didn't like that. But I'll get back to it and do it again. But Ephesians uh, 1, 16 right through to the end of Ephesians 4. And then Ephesians 5 and 6. And we'll read through Ephesians 5 and 6 today. And we'll share some things about the word. And then we'll, we'll stop it. We may have another message after that, but it's important to get the word into you because Psalms 119, 130 says, the entrance of your word gives light. We've got to let the word get in. Amen. Yeah. You've got to hear it and listen to it. Get your own eyes on it. If you can't even get your own mouth speaking, it's even better. But get the word in there. Psalms 36, verse 9 says, in your light, we see light. And God is light. There's no darkness. We have light come to us, but if there's shadows, we need to bring it into the light to expose it so that we can uh, just have the light remaining. You know, if you've got shadows in you, um, do you want them there or do you want them out? Uh, I want them out. And the enemy is, they're like, they're like shadows. Satan comes to, to shadow us and bring confusion and gray areas into the light. We have to expose it and get it out. So bring it into the light. Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a light to my pathway. It lights our path. If we're going to walk with the Lord, like we've been talking about, singing about, we need the words of God. You have to have the word. Uh, Leah was sharing earlier on about how one minister has been talking about deception. There's so much deception out there. Well, there's not enough word out there. That's what's going on. We need to get the word into us and let it grow, grow up and grow up and grow up. And let the truth. So there has to be a return uh, to the Word. The Bible says in the last days there'll be a famine for the Word. Not a famine of the Word, a famine for the Word. There's plenty of Word. There's Bibles everywhere. There's Bible apps. There's Christian television. It's not a shortage of the Word. It's a shortage of getting the Word in. You're going to have to turn away from all the other trash and get into the Bible again. Amen? Yeah. You know when there was no media or multimedia or social media or, or, or even newspapers, they haven't been around forever. The printed, the printed press came out. And then other things got printed that weren't the Bible, but the f one of the first things printed was the Word of God. That's why it was invented. And you could get the Word into you. And of course, they hid the Word of God into the monasteries, and only the ministers could talk about and speak about the Word. But it's everywhere now. But if you don't make the choice, if you don't let the Word get in you, it'll stop. the light's not going to come. It's not going to light your path. So you can have the Word everywhere and still be in darkness and still be confused. Yeah. So it's very, very important to uh, get the words in there. Uh, Proverbs 40, verse 20, I'll read from the Passion, verse 20, 21, 22, 23. Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. That's where you've got to get them. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. I thought we're supposed to meditate the word and get educated so that we can understand what to do. No, you've got to get understanding coming from the spring. It's got to spring up. Amen. The way up in the kingdom is down. You've got to go down in humility. Get the word down into your spirit and let it spring up. Let it spring up into your understanding. If all we do is study the Bible to learn, we can still be as deceived as the next person. You have to sow the word, the entrance of your word. Where? Entering where? In your head? No, not your head. The entrance into your spirit, into the spring. Let it grow down there. Unless, unless a grain of wheat's uh, buried and grows, it bears no fruit. The fruit has to be born from the spirit. Amen? Jesus himself said, you know, the words are spiritually discerned. God's words are spirit and they are life. And they're not discerned, Paul said, with the carnal uh, understanding. So we have to get the word into us. Our homework is not to learn. It's to sow the word into us and plough up our heart, guard our heart. From it comes the forces, the issues of life. And, um, you know, we're the custodians of our, of our heart, of our spirit, what goes in there. God's not going to control what you look at, what you listen to, what you say. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to take control and get that word in there. And uh, that's, that's the reason I've been doing it, just to help you along your way. But you can do it. So we're going to go through Ephesians chapter 5, just reading through the, the Passion. If you haven't got the Passion on your device, just listen. It'll go in there. And then through Ephesians 6, 
Uh, may pull up once or twice going through. But let the words of God penetrate and bring life, healing and wholeness to every part of you. Ephesians 5, be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, lust or greed, for you are his holy ones and let no one be able to accuse you of them in any form. Wow. Guard your speech. Forsake obscenities and worthless insults. These are nonsensical words that bring disgrace and are unnecessary. Nonsensical? That's a funny word. It's in the Bible. Instead, let worship fill your heart and spill out in your words. For it has been made clear to you already that the kingdom of God cannot be accessed by anyone who is guilty of sexual sin or who is impure or greedy. For greed is the essence of idolatry. How could they expect to have an inheritance in Christ's kingdom while doing those things? Don't be fooled by those who speak their empty words and deceptive teachings telling you otherwise. This is what brings God's anger upon the rebellious. Don't listen to them or live like them at all. Once your life was full of sin's darkness, but now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you because of your union with him. We need to be awakened to that, don't we? It's already happening right now. The word will awaken you to it. Your mission is to live as children flooded with his revelation light. And the supernatural fruits of his light will be seen in you. Goodness, righteousness and truth. Then you will learn to choose what is beautiful to our Lord. Don't even associate with the servants of darkness because they have no fruit in them. Instead, reveal truth to them. The very things they do in secret are too vile and filthy to even mention. Whatever the revelation light exposes, it will also correct. And everything that reveals truth is light to the soul. This is why the scripture says, Arise, you sleeper. Rise up from your coffin and the anointed one will shine his light into you. Hallelujah. (laughs) So be very careful how you live. Not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom, for we are living in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. And don't live foolishly, for then you will have discernment to fully understand God's will. And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled continually with the Holy Spirit. And your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord. Keep speaking to each other with words of Scripture singing the psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. It's like we're doing here after the music this morning. Always give thanks to Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for every person. (laughs) Even the thorns and thistles. Thank God for them. Out of your reverence for Christ, be supportive of each other in love. For wives, this means being devoted to your husbands like you are tenderly devoted to our Lord. For the husband provides leadership for the wife just as Christ provides leadership for his church as the saviour and reviver of the body. In the same way, the church is devoted to Christ. Let the wives be devoted to their husbands and everything. And to the husbands, you are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us his bride. For he died for us, sacrificing himself to make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the sharing of the pure water of the word of God. All that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure until we become a source of praise to him, glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy, without fault or flaw. See, the word's got to do it. Huh? The Word's going to do it, isn't it? The Word's going to do the cleaning. It's going to do the sanctifying. It's going to do the enlightening. It's not supposed to be something that we've got to try to work up the strength. The Word of God will wash us and cleanse us and get us ready uh, for Jesus. Husbands have the obligation of loving and caring for their wives the same way they love and care for their own bodies. For, they, for to love your wife is to love your own self. 
No one abuses his own body, but pampers it, serving and satisfying its needs. That's exactly what Christ does for his church. He serves and satisfies us as members of his body. For this reason, a man is to leave his father and his mother and lovingly hold to his wife, since the two have become joined as one flesh. Marriage is the beautiful design of the Almighty, a great mystery of Christ and his church. So every married man should be gracious to his wife, just as he is gracious to himself. And every wife should be tenderly devoted to her husband. There you go. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Husbands and wives have got a bit of a few instructions there. Children, if you want to be wise, listen to your parents and do what they tell you and the Lord will help you. For the commandment, honour your father and your mother, was the first of the Ten Commandments with a promise attached. You will prosper and live a long, full life if you honour your parents. Fathers, don't exasperate your children, but raise them up with loving discipline and counsel that brings the revelation of our Lord. That means godly counsel. Those who are employed should listen to their employers and obey their instructions with great respect and honour. Serve them with humility in your hearts as though you were working for the master. Master. Always do what's right and not only when others are watching so that you may please Christ as his servants by doing his will. Serve your employers wholeheartedly and with love as though you were serving Christ and not men. Be assured that anything you do that is beautiful and excellent will be repaid by our Lord, whether you are an employee or an employer. And to the caretakers of the flock, I say, do what is right with your people by forgiving them when they offend you. For you know there is a master in heaven that shows no favoritism. So no one got away with anything there, did they? (laughs) Some word for everyone. Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force. Force. Of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armour provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. They're coming down, amen. Amen. The dark demon gods. Oh, I thought the people were out there causing us problems. The Bible says the demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. They're coming down. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Many think, oh, you know, back there when he's kicked out. No, no, no. These heavens crash down. Because of this, you must wear all the armor of God that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert. Then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield. For it's able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. That's what's happening. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers And pray also that God's revelation would be released through me every time I preach the wonderful mystery of the hope-filled gospel. Yes, pray that I may preach the wonderful news of God's kingdom with bold freedom at every opportunity, even though I am chained as a prisoner. I am his ambassador. I am sending you 
a dear friend, Tychicus. He is a beloved brother and trustworthy minister in our Lord Jesus. He will share with you all the concerns that I have for your welfare and will inform you of how I'm getting along. He also will prophesy over you to encourage your hearts. So may God shower his peace upon you, my beloved friends. And may the blessings of faith and love fill your hearts from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus the Messiah. Abundant grace will be with you all as each of you love our Lord Jesus Christ without corruption. Amen. Love in Christ. Paul. Hallelujah.